Oh yeah, the Samira Khan thing. Hold on. Okay, real quick. We're gonna do a little this is a little stun lock, okay? Y'all see this? Do you all see that? This is this fing idiot named Samira Khan. Samira Khan, anti woke journalist. Samira Khan's an idiot. The fat positivity movement is getting out of hand. And then she posts a picture of Ashley Graham. Now, if you're not an insane conservative, you will recognize that Ashley Graham is so fucking hot, it's unbelievable. Like, oh my god, Ashley Graham is so fucking hot, it's actually un it's actually incredible. Holy shit. And not only that, but she's not even fat. She's normal sized. Like, holy shit. And then this bitch goes, studies show that poor stressed out men prefer fat women like Ashley Graham. Wealthier men prefer slender women like Irina Shake. You are all very right. I am very jealous of Ashley Graham's fat rolls. So, first of all, there is no fat rolls here at all. Like I said, Ashley Graham is not fat. Oh, was my DMs open? I'm so sorry. There we go. Like, not fat. There's not a roll here. This right here, which some people, if you are, if you are a very stupid person, you might come to the conclusion that this is a fat roll. This is her tit. This is, this is her tit. That means she has fucking enormous boobs on top of being insanely hot generally. This is a quote, okay? I'm gonna read you a quick, a quick quote, okay? This is from Roald Dahl, all right? You know, famous writer Roald Dahl, the guy who wrote, uh, he wrote uh, the BFG. Uh, he wrote a whole bunch of sick ass books. Roald Dahl was like a, a really famous children's book author. Okay, listen to this, all right? This is Roald Dahl. If a person has ugly thoughts, it begins to show on the face. And when that person has ugly thoughts every day, every week and every year, their face gets uglier and uglier until you can hardly bear to even look at it. A person who has good thoughts cannot ever be ugly. You can have a wonky nose or a crooked mouth or even a double chin and stuck out teeth. But if you have good thoughts, it will shine out of your face like sunbeams and you will always look lovely. This is from the book, The Twits. Now, I wanna show you somebody, okay? Real quick, okay? We're gonna do a little bit of lookism here. This is the type of person that Roald Dahl was talking about, okay? You can literally see the evil and nasty thoughts radiating out of this bitch's face, okay? Just, just, it just shows. No matter how much she has tried to make herself look like the standard of beauty, the, the shittiness of personality, just black. Roald Dahl was so fucking right. So fucking right. And if you've ever seen any other pictures of Samira Khan, wait a minute, oh, there's, look at this, there's even a video. Look at that, we can see the video. You can see it, look at that. You can even see it in the clenched fucking teeth. That's just, ah, the seething rage just pouring out of her fucking face. You can't hide it. You can't fucking hide it. Show us a positive example, we already did. We already did, right? We already looked at, uh, at, at, at Ashley there. She did a call out, Ashley Graham did a call out. Oh, hell yeah. Take a look at this. Quote, tweet, tweet this with a photo of you taking fat positivity too far. I'll start. God damn. God damn. God damn. Now it's really funny that people keep trying to say shit like, uh, it's conservatives, let's be real. It's conservatives that always say that fat positivity or whatever, or body positivity has gone too far. And uh, what a stupid idea. What a stupid concept. The idea that body positivity could go too far. Bodies are unbelievably diverse. There can be no true norm of beauty. And uh, 
there are all kinds of, of bodies that are attractive and that are amazing and that are beautiful. Um, and conservatives are so fucking bitter. They're so fucking stuck in their way of thinking, in, in, in this idea that they need to preserve what once was, that they literally can't appreciate the vast majority of people in the world. It's, it's a pathetic way to be. And also, it's just wrong. So when talking about specifically fat positivity, there is a lot of bullshit that gets thrown around, okay? First of all, while there are some risks to being extremely, extremely overweight, which is a very hard thing to determine in the first place, uh, while it is true that there are some health risks, this is true for being underweight as well. In fact, on a pure statistical level, on average, it is more dangerous to be underweight than it is to be overweight. And the reason for that is because, well, your body doesn't have the re the, the the uh, nutrients that it needs to maintain your organs, to maintain your bones and all of these things like that. So, uh, and yet in our society, there is an unbelievable, overwhelming obsession with weight, with people being too heavy. Now, I'm a bit biased, maybe. Maybe it's because I've spent my entire life being bullied for being overweight. Maybe it's because people were incredibly cruel to me to the degree that in my early 20s, I got involved in a number of extremely dangerous fad diets, desperately hoping to lose weight because I was under the belief that I was somehow bad, um, intrinsically bad for having been born a chubby person and being mildly, and I mean mildly overweight. Now, I was not fat as a child. I was not obese as a child, but for my entire life, I was ruthlessly mocked for being a fat kid. And that has never stopped. People still make fun of me for it to this day, even though obviously I shrug that off much better than I used to. And um, it's terrible. Uh, it's been studied to an extensive degree to the, to the point that well, hell, let me just bring this up. Yeah, let me just read this for you real quick. Oh, yes, here we go. Okay, I've brought this up on my stream before, but we're going to talk about it again real quick. Fijian girls succumb to Western dysmorphia. This is an article that was published in the Harvard Gazette based on uh, research by a anthropologist and some, uh, some, uh, some various uh, various researchers who wanted to study the impact of, of, of the American mentality um, on weight. So let's read this real quick. In 1982, Harvard Medical School psychiatrist, sorry, psychiatrist, not anthropologist, Anne E. Becker was still an undergraduate at Radcliffe when she traveled to Fiji for a summer of anthropology field work. What struck her about this South Pacific island nation uh, and has in many research trips since was the absolute preoccupation with food and eating. Family and social life really revolve around food. It's all about food all the time. In a March 11 lecture at Radcliffe Gymnasium, Becker described the rhetoric of encouragement older women use to draw passerbys into lavish meals. Afterwards, she said eaters unbutton, unzip, and they lie down where they are. That's a good meal in Fiji. The centrality of, of food, in part, is a cultural artifact of a traditional economy based on shifting fortunes of subs subsistent agriculture. Who knew when the next run of fish would come or how good the crops would be? So prosperity has traditionally been associated with food and with hefty figures. In women especially, Fijians appreciate large, robust bodies, said Becker. But that ideal body type is now on a collision course with the Western ideal that equates beauty with thinness. This clash of cultures has affected adolescent girls most deeply, she said, and has endangered mental health implications, or it has engendered mental health implications. Since the first trip to Fiji, Becker has earned a raft of Harvard degrees, an AB in 1983, when she was awarded Radcliffe Captain Jonathan Fay Prize for outstanding scholarly work, an MD and a PhD in 1990, and an SCM in epidemiology in 1995. Today, she's an associate professor of anthropology and psychiatry at Harvard Medical School and director of the E disorders clinical and research program at the Massachusetts General Ho Hospital. Inspired by what is now more than two decades of research in Fiji, Becker is a student of eating habits and self-image in an ancient native culture now beset by the pressures of mod modernity. 
Here we go. Becker oversaw a 1995 to 1998 study that measured the effect of television on cultural norms. Television was only catching on in Fiji in 1995, a decade before even electricity had been rare. The results were startling. In 1995, without television, girls in Fiji appeared to be free of the eating disorders so common in the West. But by 1998, three years later, after just a few years of sexy soap operas and seductive commercials, 11.3% of adolescent girls reported they had at least once purged, specifically in order to lose weight. To illustrate this rapid transformation of ideals, Becker quoted from the 1998 interviews, I want their body, said one girl of the Western shows she watched. I want their size. By the glow of the television, young girls in Fiji got the idea that they could re-sculpt their lives, but they also began to think of themselves as poor and fat. Television brought with it a social storm of many dimensions, she said. For one, it dislocated traditional clans. Becker showed a picture of the chief's family in their living room. To one side was a television, on the other was a treadmill. Television and other Western influences also stimulated an appetite for consumer goods almost no one could afford. Becker gave an example. To feed his family one meal at McDonald's, a farmer would have to grow and cut one whole ton of sugarcane. The changing social environment also took its toll on mental health. In 2007, Becker started a school-based study within one wedge-shaped se section of Viti Levu, Fiji's main island. More than 520 girls filled out the questionnaires and 300 consented to interviews, okay? Becker found that disordered eating habits were alive and well in Fiji, with 45% of girls then reporting they had purged in the last month. You get where I'm going at with this? You get where I'm going at with this? American, the American approach towards weight is literally irrational. Not only is, is dangerous weight way different than what most Americans think of it as, but also the just passive, constant hatred and uh, erasure of, of anybody who is who has any body fat on them whatsoever is devastating to the mental health of everyone, okay? It really fucking does. It really fucking hurts people. But yeah, body positivity has gone too far, everybody. Renophilia. Sometimes I look at childhood photos and I'm shocked that I was made fun of for my weight. Like I had health problems ignored by everyone because it was presumed that I was hurting because I was fat. That I wheezed when I ran and my lungs burned because I was fat. That my child, my child knees hurt because I was fat. All because I was at risk of being overweight. This has been studied extensively. Unironically, there is, have been broad healthcare industry-wide studies that show that doctors are literally worse at treating uh, patients who are overweight because they will blame everything on their weight. That is not a healthy way of, it, of, of approaching things. It is unscientific, it is not objective, it is not even rational. And it kills people. Merrick, says, Merrick DeVille says, hey, good to see you, Merrick, by the way. Men regularly say I'm fat since I got my breast implants, and yet nothing else about my body has changed. Isn't that fucking insane? Autistic Brewer says, it turned out when I was a kid that I had immune disease instead of, instead of just being a chunky kid. You don't like doing cardio as a kid with swelling around your heart and lungs. Doctors are fat phobic as fuck. That is true. My mom's doctors blamed her kidney stones she'd had for over 25 years on her weight, even when she was skinnier. Yeah, it's actually ridiculous. I, I, I don't have, I didn't prepare a segment for this, so I don't have all of the citations on hand, but I assure you, uh, just if, if this is a topic that you feel strongly about and you don't think that I'm speaking the truth, just take a little bit of time to go read the actual research that's been done on weight bias in the medical industry. It's drastic. The outcomes for fat people are worse, are so much worse, because they will literally be ignored. They will literally tell their doctor, hi, my organ is hurting me, and the doctor will go, just try losing some weight. It's pathetic. Killjoy says, one of the things that got me a lot of shit in the military was that I was suddenly unable to do sit-ups, and people blame me for being overweight. It turns out I actually had several hernias, and sit-ups were literally pinching my organs. Seriously. 
So Samira Khan, at the, uh, at the, just to sort of wrap up this little stun lock, because I knew I, 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 I knew it was necessary to do a stun lock. Um, Samira Khan is a truly ugly individual, to her core, a ugly, horrible, disgusting person, and no one should try to be like her. Uh, and if you look like, uh, if you look like Ashley Graham, I'm not gonna say hit up my DMs, because honestly, I, 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 I'm, I'm doing good. I have plenty of partners at the moment, but be confident in yourself, because I can assure you, a lot of people find you hot as fuck.